In today's adventure, we're looking for the secret grave of a fine fella named Jimmy Cunningham, located somewhere inside the green pastures of the Stanley Park seawall. With me on camera, as always, is Rick Von Schmidt. But before we get to Jimmy, let's explore the seawall a little bit. There's lots to see and do here. You can walk, run, rollerblade, or bike. You can even see some totem poles, if you like. You can gaze at the famous girl in swimsuit statue. But Rick, gawking at semi-naked ladies on the beach is strictly taboo. The Lionsgate Bridge spans above Burrard Inlet's foam. And here's a statue of running champion, Harry Jerome. You can learn how the indigenous people's fish were caught. And you can even leave an inspirational message with colorful chalk. This lighthouse helps sailors navigate the ocean's tempest. Ooh, here's a replica figurehead of the SS Empress. You can take a picture at the old hollow tree or take in the view of the world's best city. The Vancouver Rowing Club is the city's oldest amateur sports joint. Hey everybody, let's scream hallelujah at Hallelujah Point. All right, good job with the montage there, Rick. Jimmy Cunningham was born in Scotland in 1878. He moved to Canada in 1910. After his brave service during World War I, Jimmy became a master stonemason. He worked on lots of projects, including UBC, the Empress Hotel in Victoria, and the best homes in Vancouver. In the 1920s, Jimmy joined the team building this fine seawall around Stanley Park. And sweet Jimmy worked hard every day. Whether it was hot, cold, or pouring rain, Jimmy was relentless. If a big storm washed away his work, he'd go right back at it. According to legend, Jimmy once had pneumonia but snuck out and came down in his pajamas. It was grueling work, but Jimmy loved his job. Sweet Jimmy worked on the seawall for more than 30 years until he retired in 1955 at the age of 77. Even after that, he would come down and see how the fellas were doing here. Sadly, Jimmy passed away in 1963 at the age of 85, and he never got to see the seawall completed. The last stone was laid in 1971, and that was the year a group of runners started an annual race around the new 9-kilometer seawall. On November 1st, 2020, they will have race number 50, and the name of that race, you guessed it, the James Cunningham Seawall Race. And Rick, I think we got a picture of Jimmy. You want to put that up? Just look at Jimmy's good craftsmanship here. We're talking about old school craftsmanship that has withstood the elements for nearly 100 years. Jimmy worked so hard, he kept needing more stone, more stone. And crews would feed them granite from anywhere they could find it, including the beach, stone quarries, the old electric streetcar system, even abandoned headstones from Mountain View Cemetery. The seawall has expanded since Jimmy's time. Vancouver now has the world's longest uninterrupted waterfront path. It's 28 kilometers from the convention center to Spanish banks. Millions of people use the seawall every year, but do any of them stop to appreciate Jimmy's hard work? I'll tell you someone who does appreciate it. This dude right here. You tell him, Quacky. You tell the world. Jimmy built a seawall so robust that it withstands the violent blast from the 9 o'clock cannon every night. Hey, don't worry, Rick. It's not 9 o'clock yet. Yeah, what's that? It's firing at 7 o'clock during the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's 7 o'clock right now. Hold her steady, Rick. All right, we're beside the Siwash Rock here, the location of that great Jimmy photo. Rick, you want to? For a fellow that spent most of his life on the seawall, it's no surprise that Jimmy wanted to spend the rest of eternity here. 
Nobody seems to know for certain where the final remains of Jimmy and his wife Elizabeth are located. Most reports say they're buried in a secret location somewhere inside his beloved seawall. We may never know. But there is a small tribute to Jimmy that you may have never noticed. It was installed by the Board of Parks and Recreation in 1963, the year Jimmy passed away. And it says, To the memory of James Cunningham, Master Stonemason. The Stanley Park seawall is evidence of his dedicated work of 32 years. Hey, Rick, I just thought of something. Let's check the old city listing, see if we can find out where Jimmy lived. James Cunningham and wife Elizabeth, he was a mason for the Vancouver Parks Board. Their home was 4446 Quebec Street. Let's go. And it looks like Jimmy picked a great place to live. Beautiful Quebec Street would have been a peaceful place for sweet Jimmy to get a good night's sleep after a hard day of laying stone. His house was built in 1910, and I'm happy to say it's still in fine shape, just as Jimmy would have liked. We're going to wrap things up here. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. My thanks to Bev Sugarman for makeup, Jewel Hailmere for wardrobe, and a special hello to Olivia Catherine. On behalf of Rick and myself, thanks for watching. And until next time, that's a good day.